scruffy colonials persist in these futile gestures of defiance? Futile, Colonel? Blowing up bridges that you need to get your supplies through? A temporary inconvenience, actually. Quite ineffectual, I assure you. Who is he trying to convince, Daniel? Himself? Or us? You will address me with the proper respect. I am Colonel Trevelyan, Governor of His Britannic Majesty's 4th Military District. You know, Daniel ain't too much on this here military etiquette. What do I do? Bow, salute, or curtsy? You know, I kind of figure the Colonel wants you to do all three. We shall see how insolent you are tomorrow morning at sunrise. Have a look. What did they get you for, Sam? These blasted Tories. They raided our farm. They killed my folks. I was away visiting relatives. I got back. Wasn't anything left but foodstuffs and some grain. I heard British regulars were coming to confiscate it. I couldn't let that food fall into enemy hands. What'd you do, Sam? I burned it. All of it. I wasn't about to let him use it against us. He's a spunky one, ain't he? And I took off up into the hills and the British put a price on my head. And then just this morning, some of those good Tory citizens hate the idea of our fighting for liberty. They turned me in. This is loyalist country, all right. Public officials, merchants, housewives, everybody. They're all loyal to the king. Worse than being in a nest full of copperheads. They, they hate us more than the redcoats do. The redcoats are just doing their jobs as good soldiers, but these blasted Tories, they'd like to take all the patriots and boil them in oil. Well, here we are, mates. A delicious last meal for the condemned. Cold porridge. Yeah. But seeing as how you're going to hang, you can order anything else you like. Providing it's more of the same cold porridge. <laughs> Mark you, it's no better nor no worse than what His Majesty's troops have to drink. I says to myself, Harry Pickens, I says, Sergeant Harry Pickens, for the soon as you get out of...
We need a Saruse. I'll move him, Boone. This way. Might as well save your strength and get some sleep. It's a good place as any. We'll move with first light. Where to? Toward home and mother. To safety behind her own lines. First stop, Shelby. Slim chance of making it, Daniel. That's more than a week's travel. And this is all in all this territory. Shelby has more red coats than the town we just left. Well, I won't guarantee it'll be easy. But Mr. Bourne, we need food place to hide and rest and help in finding the right roads. How can we do it? Uh. 
We'll find a way. We'll do it. Shelby's the place I want. Come on. We come from the north to do our job, and they threw us in a jug in Dover. Right. Well, Shelby is even south of Dover. Dangerous to go back the way we came. They might be expecting us. Mr. Boone, this way's longer and riskier. That's right, Sam, but we're going to have help. We'll have help? In here? Morning, good sirs. Leander Dunphy's the name, master bootmaker. Sizing you all up, I'd say you men needing something sturdy for walking comfort. Instead of thin soled footwear like this officer gent who rides a lot. Matter of fact, I ordered some boots. I just dropped by to see if they were ready. Uh, don't seem to remember you. What was the name? Some people call me Richard. Poor Richard. Well, bless King George. My dim spark of mental intelligence must be flickering out. I recall you now. That's the right smart fit. And handsome lines to attract the ladies. I'll uh, send your old boots over. You can pay the boy then. I trust officers. Now, sir, you're... Boots are ready and waiting. Comes to 20 shillings. 20 shillings? I don't have that much. It's more than I counted on. Sorry. That's the price. Well, maybe I can borrow it. He that goes a-borrowing... Goes a-sorrowing. Yep. That's just the way Ben Franklin wrote it in Poor Richard's Almanac. Well, Mr. Dunphy, it's nice to know you, and my name is... You don't want to hear it. No, their name's neither. Ain't safe to know. If something goes wrong, they might force it out of me. You'll do fine. Now for you. You really think it'll work? Not the first ones to work deep behind British lines. Mr. Dunphy's gotten a lot of folks back once their mission's finished. Lots of captured American soldiers that escaped British prison. I helped them get back, too. A uh, secret escape route and a network of agents run on a British nose. Now, now that's something. There's a peddler's wagon waiting for you right outside that door. Pots and pans, household goods, trinkets. Why a peddler's wagon? Your new occupation, traveling peddler. There's food in the wagon, jerk venison, cold journey cake, and a sack of dried corn. Should keep the wrinkles out of your belly until the next agent takes over. And who'll that be? Haven't the foggiest idea. All I can tell you is a method for catching hold of him. Don't take any chances, do you? Can't afford to, Tiny. No agent knows the identity of any other agent in the system. You mean we just pass from agent to agent along the escape route? The best way to avoid a blunder. Do you know what will happen if one of us miscalculates? There wouldn't be enough left of our hide to make slippers for a one-legged grasshopper. That's a powerful, clever scheme you got there, boss. Yep. Here, tell some fancy-pants French officer on General Lafayette's staff hatched it out. Any of you know a little tune called We Have Lived and Loved Together? If not, I can teach it to you. No, I think I know it. Why? From here, you go on to a fort called Stony Point. You'll stop at the tavern there for refreshment. And in there, kind of casual-like, you'll whistle that little tune. Then you wait to be approached. 
How do we know who's the right one? Here's your sign and countersign. Commit it to your memory, then burn it. And a quotation from poor Richard Zolman. It's so fitting and proper choosing Ben Franklin. The British just naturally hate him. Now, this is the most important part of your trip. This map shows the next leg of your journey. This route should be the safest as far as Redcoats and Tory Rangers is concerned. Turn it into your next agent, get a new map. Why draw it on cloth? In case you stopped and searched, they wouldn't think of looking at a neckerchief. <laughs> Sing song, Kitty, won't you tie me, yo? He sure was the biggest fool. Sing song, Kitty, won't you tie me, yo? Kimo, Kimo, dear, I owe. Mahima, ha, Willie, Billy, Wink, don't rump and up and boo. Kimo, Kimo, sing song, Kitty, won't you tie me, yo? He could dance and he could sing. Sing song, Kitty, won't you tie me, yo? He could make the whole woods ring. Sing song, Kitty, won't you tie me, yo? Oh, Kimo, Kimo, dear, I owe. Ah, Willie, Billy, Wink, Rumpa, Dumpa, Doo, Dumpa, Kimo, Kimo, Sing Song, Kitty, won't you guide me, oh? Oh! Whoa! What's going on up there? A couple of lizard green Tory Rangers. Whoa! Dismount and submit to a search. What's the trouble, Corporal? Private property suitable for war use is subject to military appropriation. By whose authority? Commanding officer, 9th Loyalist Regiment. You carrying any weapons or firearms in here? No, just penner's goods. We sell them from town to town. Hey, a right handsome pots. <laughs> just what a soldier needs to repair his vittles. Uh, we're happy to contribute. They're fighting the rebels for us, you know. Hey, candles, steel needles, sewing yarn buttons. <laughs> Grab this bolt of cloth. It's about time we had some new shirts made. Uh, anything a soldier needs has military importance. Ah, this is Wait. Ah. Just put it down over there. Here's an odd one. Ever seen the likes of this before? No. What in tarnation do you call us here, Peddler? Oh, that's, um... Do you know? I don't know. Must have gotten it by mistake. I, I know what it is. That's an egg whip. Well, uh, sure, it's used for the uh, latest thing from France. We first saw it in Boston, you know? An egg whip? Sure, it's used for beating up eggs to make omelets. Might have peculiar. Hmm. Peddler not known his own stock. Who are you, mister? Hoskins. Peter Hoskins. This is my nephew, and uh, that's my assistant. Not knowing your own goods. You know, I think the captain would like to have a little talk with you. I'm putting you all under arrest. You looking for this, mister? Now what do we do with him? We can't just leave him here. Shoot him. They're Tories, ain't they? They deserve to die. Oh, no, I understand how you feel, Sam. Come. Move out there. Straddle that log. You face this way. friends come along and find them. Then you know what happens to us. You better get the stony point. Done in by an egg whip. What are you going to do, sir? 
I am when we're safely out of this. I haven't had time to think about it much. I guess I'll put down roots someplace. Well, you're welcome to stay on at Boonesboro. Boonesboro? It's a nice little place on the south bank of the Kentucky River, and there's lots of fine land available. <laughs> Sounds real nice. Thanks. I'd like to settle down, maybe raise a family. I'm a family man myself. It's a great satisfaction. The country needs more families. We're growing all the time. Hey, Daniel, why don't you tell that to a few of them Tuscarora squalls? You think it'd do any good? Well, maybe you can convince one of them to hitch up with me for patriotic reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up there. Of Molly Oak. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's cold apple cider. Do you have any food? Cold as a landlord's ox. Well, Daniel, you folks newcomers to Fort Stony Point? Well, I'm just passing through, coming household goods from town to town. Beat anything? Just a husband. Look around in your wagon. Couldn't he pick a better town to do his whistling? There's no choice. Those ranchers can be discovered at any time. I always did like that too. Do you know the words? Sure I do. Ah, quiet, everybody! Quiet! Quiet, 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 everybody! Quiet! I've got a young fella here who's going to sing for us! Yeah. Only be back! Give me that one box you took off the fellow what couldn't pay his bill. have lived and loved together through many a changing year we have shared each other's gladness and wept each other's tears i have never known such sorrow that was long unsoothed by thee That was long unsoothed by thee For thy smile can make a summer Where darkness else would be For thy smile can make summer where darkness else would be any of them give you the sound you expected there you want should i whistle again be too suspicious. You best get out of here. Well, we go. Um, we're sitting here like fish in a rain barrel waiting to be shot. Let's go. What's your order? 
sorry, friends. We rent comfortable rooms. Would you be stopping the night with us? Maybe, maybe not. A man what travels for a living needs his rest. Early to bed and early to rise. Makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Score another for old Ben Franklin. Tried to give you the sign inside. Lightly, I feel I'm being watched. Especially since the last man I passed along about a week ago, the poor devil was wounded, forgot his instructions, bungled himself into a British patrol and was recaptured. Might be my imagination, but I, I don't feel entirely safe. You're a brave woman, Molly. Oh, I don't know. This business gives a body nightmares. I keep dreaming of a British rope, and my neck fits into it like a duck's foot in the mud. <laughs> we know the feeling. Go to my cabin, far end of the fort. I'll turn the tavern over to one of my helpers. Wait for me. <laughs> As my old pappy used to say, every shut I ain't sleep and every goodbye ain't gone. Peach trees and chicken gizzards. Women's these days are as slick as lizards. <laughs> Give me the old map. Burn this. As I said, you'll split up. You two take this road here through New Oak Valley, and you, this other road past Ridgeville. Both roads come together at Cedar Creek. You'll meet right here at a fur trader's cabin. Ain't much water in the creek this time of year, and if John Bull is trailing you, he'll expect you to cross over. But as I understand it, the new agent has different ideas. You wear this now. Any reason? The best, they have your descriptions, have to fit you up now to look different. And what I have in mind for you, my tall friend, a rag on your neck ain't suitable. You ain't no hurry. No, just on the way to Fayetteville to fill the pulpit in the new church. We just buried one of our boys back there. A horse threw him, broke his neck. I wonder if you could preach him a few words, kind of send him on his way. I'd be glad to say a prayer for one of uh, our gallant royalist rangers. I think it might be better if I uh, spoke from the heart. As the uh, flower, uh, the glory of man withers away, but the souls of the righteous are in the hands of the Lord. To the Unwise, uh... Dick Simpson. Dick Simpson, uh, you seem to die, but you are in peace. Though you seem punished in the eyes of man, your hopes are full of immortality and you shall be greatly rewarded. Or 
God proved you and uh, found you worthy for himself. Amen. Thank you, Your Reverence. We're on uh, patrol out hunting down some traitorous rebels. They make out to be peddlers, but uh, they're going to be hung the minute they're found. Mercy be granted their souls. You ain't seen nothing of them, have you? A big black fella, a young boy about 20, and a tall man? Tall man? Yeah, about your height. Sorry, uh, I'll keep a sharp eye open. <laughs> Bless you, brothers. Be protected. Just like the letter says, Corporal, I'm bringing this escaped slave back to my father in Raleigh. And that's the biggest slave I've ever laid my eyes on. What's your name, big fella? Reuben. Funny he wouldn't run off again, uh... You with no gun and him without leg chains or manacles. <sighs> Wouldn't do any good. He'd just break out of them. He's got a real thing about chains. Oh, he has, eh? Has he? <laughs> You've got a real thing about chains, have you? Hmm. <laughs> you know, Reuben, are you as strong as you look? Eh? Sitting in this smelly barn all day makes tedious duty. We ain't had us a day of sport in weeks. Bring him over here. Come on. But all those people are waiting to be checked through. I don't think you heard me. Bring him over here. Do what the man says, Reuben. Right, lads, chain him up. You know, it appears to me, Reuben, that you've got the strength of ten men locked up in those hickory log arms of yours. Prove it, and you're on your way. You don't, then you'll work for us, filling potholes in that road out there, from here to kingdom come. Right, who's next? friend of Colonel Trevelyan. You try anything foolish and I'll probably take it out of your pay for the next few years. Clean up that mess, blast you. And then get out of here. Both of you. Here? 
whiskey sneaking up on a man like that. Anybody around, Mr. Boone? No, no, a soul. Some bread and some apple there if you're hungry. If we weren't too sure we'd make it. Ah, I figured we'd better wait a while. Yeah, you almost didn't. No, no, no. He means we had ourselves a real hard stopper with some red coats. Yeah, they tried to give me a bad time, and I almost spoiled everything. I had kind of a narrow squeak, too. You people turn around real gentle like now because I'd be armed. No, I'm not a trusting man, even a preacher. If you come here peaceable like, or you aim to steal me furs. You keep your furs friends. We're just weary travelers seeking to rest a spit. The only trouble is we may rest too long and waste time. You know what they say. Dost thou love life, do not squander time. <laughs> But that's the stuff life is made of. <laughs> the first friendly face we've seen in days. My, uh, my partner would be out in the woods with a horse and wagon. I'll uh, send him a smoke signal. He'll come for you. <laughs> uh, my name's uh, Pettigrew. Who might you all be? Your question, mister. I'm thinking, Mr. Pettigrew, that you agents aren't supposed to ask the names. Don't you move! Huh. Why didn't you know that? I heard you talking. My name's Russ I'm the Asian. Pettigrew's a dirty river pirate. A few days ago, him and his gang stole my best furs. Then they got suspicious and forced me to talk. Pettigrew stuck around and to, say, to see what was going to happen. What did he hope to gain? Everything he could steal from you. Then turn you into the British for the reward. I smoke brought his gang of renegades. Here's your new map. Like as far as Fort Royal, last stop. I'll give you some New clothes and new instructions later. Later, we can't hold out in here long. Don't have to. Come on, come on. It's a natural life, so tough. They're under the hill to the other side. When we discovered it, we built this cabin up against it. Have to give it up now. We were told you know the way. Always glad to see the Rangers getting new recruits. But I've got me a day's work to finish. I'll take you part way tonight. Uh, Henry, go and get some vittles ready and spread out some extra blankets for these people. Uh, it's mighty careless of you getting lost. These days, it's a heap dangerous being neglectful. A little neglect may breed mischief. For want of a nail, a shoe was lost. For one of a shoe, the horse was lost. For one of the horse, the rider was lost. Our agent at Cedar Creek was right. This is the last link in the chain. Come dawn, we head for the American lines looking like berry pickers. But there aren't many berries left this time of year. There's no other excuse for covering your movements. You'll just have to take our chances. You'll find some sacks up there and make it comfortable. Between the British and American lines, there's a bridge. It's guarded by Hessians. Now, they have no stake in this war. They just like money. So thanks to a well-placed bribe or two, the sergeant of the Hessian guard detachment orders his men to look the other way when berry pickers cross the bridge. Hear that, Sam? Come tomorrow morning, it's home again. That's only until you and Mr. Boone get orders to blow up another British bridge. Here's a pillow for you. Here's another. Better turn in.
that another escape party reached the end of the line. Gabe, you've got it. Yeah, I'll put it. It's gone. It's not here. You know, Boom? There's something awful fishy here. You think your missing friend stole the map while we slept? He could have, but why? Gabe, do you recall early in the evening when Sam said we were ordered to blow up a British bridge? Yeah. I never told him that. Not at Dover nor any time. Did you? No, I didn't. Gentlemen, we're in bad trouble. Where could he be, Bill? I don't know, Gabe. Fletcher, you stay here. We're not back in 15 minutes. Get a hold of the escape agent. Tell him to call in all of his men, no matter what. It's not too late already. Congratulations, Lieutenant Weaver. Or should I call you Sam? I couldn't have picked a better man to ferret out the secrets of their escape system. You know, there was one time when I almost ruined everything. Then, of course, some of our own people almost spoiled everything along the way. But they kept right on going. And we kept the pressure on, pretending to pursue to hurry them along. Now, thanks to the notes you took, we know everything. The route, the names of the agents, the places of contact, the signs, countersigns. I can smash their entire apparatus in one blow. Then you have troops ready, sir. To deploy it outside the fort. I didn't want to alarm anyone. Now I can give the order to one group to surround the blacksmith's cabin and retake the prisoners, and to the other to move on the escape agents and round them up. It's a shame to have to spoil things for you. You fools, you're surrounded. You'll never get out of the boat alive! The map, Sam. Or is it Lieutenant Weaver? Samuel Forbes Weaver. Senior Lieutenant. British Army. You can start preparing for another role, Lieutenant. Prisoner of war. Take him, Gabe. An officer of the Crown become his prisoner? I'd rather die. You know, Sonny, I got a feeling that with time, I can make you heal. <laughs> How about some more apple cobbler, Gabe? My mouth says yes, but my stomach says, hey, up there, quit crowding. <laughs> Tomorrow's another day. Yeah, I know, but he ain't like there's no tomorrow. Now, Daniel, you know Rebecca's the best cook in Boonsboro. Amen. In the whole world. Here, I'll have some more. Mm. Now, next time I go on an important mission, you tell Pa to take me along. He's right over there. Why don't you ask him yourself? Because he doesn't always listen to me, but he always listens to you. In that case, next time we go on an important mission, I'll tell him, don't go. Dan, you were gone so very long. Can't you tell me anything about it? Oh, there's not much to tell. Just do the things we had to do for the Army. Well, did any good come out of it? Oh, a few things. Like what? Uh, well, I did learn uh, the words to a new song. How's it go? Um, we have lived and loved together through 
many a changing year. We have shared each other's laughter and wept each other's tear. Hey, that was worth coming home for. Mush. Mush? Here, I thought you were so wrapped up in yourself, you didn't have time to think of me. Now, where did you get an idea like that? He that falls in love with himself hath no rivals. Benjamin Franklin, aren't you acquainted with poor Richard's almanac? Never heard of it. Daniel, sometimes I don't understand you at all. <laughs>